Hello, my name is Gopinath Selvaraj. I'm a consultant anesthetist working in the NHS in UK. Today, I'm going to talk about the CESR or the CESR pathway. So if you are thinking of going down that route, then this video might be of help to you. So please keep watching. Now, let's move on to the presentation. Now, a little bit of background about the General Medical Council or GMC. So, GMC is the medical regulatory body in the United Kingdom. So, it maintains the official register of all medical practitioners in the UK. So, on top of that, it also sets the standard for medical education and training in the United Kingdom. So GMC maintains three registers. One is a general register where every doctor practicing in the UK will be on. Another one is the GP register where all the registered GPs will be on. And the third one is the specialist register. So only people on this register can go on to work as a substantive consultant in the UK. So to get onto this register, you should have completed your training in UK or you should have proven, proved to the GMC that you had similar training compared to that of a trainee in the United Kingdom. So this flowchart shows us the different routes by which you can get into the specialist register. So to, uh, before going into the flow chart, you need to understand how the training system in the UK works. So every doctor who's come out of the medical school has to undergo two years of foundation training, F1 and F2. Then they have to do two to three years of core training, depending upon the specialty they have chosen to work on. And after that, they have to do five to even sometimes seven, eight years of specialist training, depending upon the specialty again. So at the end of the specialty training, they will be awarded what is called as CCT. So if you look at the first box, which says CCT, that's what it means. That is for trainees who have completed a structured training program in the UK. So they will automatically go onto the specialist register and they will be eligible to become a substantive consultant. There might be another group of uh, doctors who might have done half of their training through a structured training program and for various reasons would have moved out of the training program. So that's where, and they want to get into the specialist register and that's where this uh, column of CSER, CP comes into play. And the third group of doctors might not have had done any training in the United Kingdom they could be doctors from overseas or they could be doctors in UK who were not part of the training program. So GMC has divided a, devised a pathway or a route for these doctors to get into the specialist register. That is what is called as the CSER pathway. That is the one we are going to look in detail in this presentation today. Now, we know what is CCT and what is CSER. So here we are going to look at the differences between these two pathways. So as I mentioned before, the CCT or Certificate of Completion of Training is a structured training program. So you have to apply for the core training first. Once you have finished your core training, then you have to apply for your specialty training program. And once you are successful on that, you will go on to the program and at the end of the training program, you will be awarded CCT. So during this program, uh, you are expected to pass your fellowship or the membership exams of the respective Royal Colleges. So during this training program, you might have to rotate around different hospitals within the deanery. Some hospitals could be as far as 100 to 150 miles. So you might have to relocate during that time to do that training. The, on the other hand, 
seizure pathway you can stay in a same hospital if your hospital is big enough you can do most of your training modules within that hospital but there is no guarantee that you will have automatic place available to do the training because trainees will be competing for those slots as well very rarely if you are working in a dhgh or a district general hospital which is a small hospital you might have to go to a bigger hospital to do higher specialty modules for this you need the support of the department and your colleagues as well and the self initiative is very very important here every effort and every organization and arrangement of these training modules is solely up to you and so it is up to you to uh, initiate take it forward to go down this route now we move on to cesar pathway so what does cesar stands for cesar stands for certificate of eligibility for specialist registration as you might be aware by now this is an alternate route for doctors not in full time training program to get into the specialist register provided they can prove to gmc that the training they had is equivalent to a structured training program within the united kingdom so the doctors who want to go through this route or assessed against the standards of the uk's cct curriculum it's a totally online application process which is solely based on evidence that you submit with the general medical council currently gmc accepts application for cesar across 65 specialties and 31 sub specialties so the details of which are all on the gmc website on the following link so this diagram shows us the cesar application across different specialties as we could see the majority of application are from the surgical specialty and general medicine so the other common specialties where the applications are received are radiology obstetric and gynecology pediatrics and anesthetics and there are also other uncommon specialties as i mentioned earlier gmc takes application for nearly 60 specialties so how do we know if someone is eligible to apply through the cesar pathway there are two main criteria one is anyone who has got a specialist med medical qualification in that specialty can apply for a cesar in that specialty or they should have held at least 6 months of continuous training in that specialty so both these could could have been achieved anywhere in the world doesn't have to be in the united kingdom as long as you fulfill one of these two criteria you are eligible to apply for cesar pathway so how do i apply for cesar so to apply for cesar you need to have an account with the general medical council and then once you have created an account you can log into the account and there the applications can be made online so all the evidence has to be uploaded electronically so once you have started your application that's valid for 12 months time period say for example if at the end of 10 months or 11 months if you think that you can you might not be able to complete your application within that 12 months time then please make sure you got a backup of all those electronic evidences as the application might become invalid after 12 months not to worry you can always start a new application process so that's why it is very important for you to have a backup of all those electronic evidence this application process involves a fees with the general medical council the current fees for cesar pathway is 1640 pounds on the day of submission of your application you are expected to 
pay this amount to GMC. So this busy slide shows us the application process. What happens when the applicant applies and what are the process the application goes through and what will be the outcome. So in future slides, I'll be splitting this into smaller chunks so it is easy for everyone to understand. So if you're wondering how your applications are assessed, so the applications are mainly assessed based on the evidence you submit. So the GMC would like to explore the depth and breadth of the competencies you have achieved and they would like to compare that with the CCT curricula. To this help with this process, the General Medical Council has come out with a specialty specific guidance or SSG for each specialty. So if you go onto the GMC website and look for your particular specialty, there will be an SSG available. Please make sure you go through it in detail and then start collecting evidence according to that. So this CSER process normally involves a candidate submitting evidence of about 800 to 1200 pages. So the GMC mainly would like to know what the doctor's training in the last five years were. That doesn't mean you can't submit evidence outside that five years period, but GMC will be focusing mainly on the last five years of training. And GMC gives importance to prospective evidence over retrospective evidence. So make sure that you start collecting evidence prospectively rather than going back and backdating those evidences. So this is a very common question many doctors ask. How do I know I'm ready to apply for the CSER pathway? So as I mentioned earlier, SSG or the specialty specific guidance is the key. Make sure you read the SSG in detail and start making or collecting evidence according to that. Do not du duplicate the evidence and prospective evidence carries more weightage than retrospective. So make sure it, it is, it's, it's collected prospectively. And a typical CSER application is about thousand pages. So make sure you provide that much of evidence when you apply. And also make sure all your evidence are anonymized and verified. In future slide, I'll explain what anonymization is, how to anonymize and how to verify the evidence you submit with the General Medical Council. All the evidence you submit has to be authenticated, verified and anonymized. The first golden rule is if your medical qualification overseas or in a different language, make sure you translate that into English and make sure those documents are authenticated either by the awarding body or by an independent solicitor. Then once you apply, you need to have a medical supervisor who can verify these documents. The role of this supervisor is to confirm to GMC that he has verified the originals and it is a true copy that you are submitting as part of your evidence for the application process. Next comes the process of anonymization. GMC takes data protection very seriously. So, in the evidence you are submitting, there shouldn't be any patient identifiable data. So you have to ensure that all those data are anonymized. All the patient relative data has to be anonymized as well. So if you are assessing a colleague or if you're giving reference to a colleague, the name of that colleague has to be anonymized as well. The exceptions are you don't have to anonymize the gender and date of birth according to the GMC website. So how should I anonymize my evidence? In the days of paper-based evidence, it was recommended to use a wax crayon to anonymize. But now, because everything is online, GMC recommends a PDF 
reduction software such as the Adobe Acrobat or something very similar to that. And all the details regarding anonymization are available on the GMC website on the link below. What happens if I fail to anonymize my evidence? This is very much possible due to the enormity of the evidence you sub submit to GMC. So those files which has got patient or the relative identifiable information will be deleted and you will be informed about that and you will give an opportunity to resubmit those evidence. Even at that point, the GMC will inform the Royal College saying that, that uh, the first submitted evidence had the personal data. So then on further submission, if we still happen to leave any patient identifiable information, then the GMC takes this very seriously. So those documents will be excluded from the application and there is even a chance that GMC might refer you to the fitness to practice directorate for breach of the data protection rules and regulation. So you got to be extremely cautious while anonymizing the evidence you submit. So how do I submit electronic evidence? Because these days it is totally an evidence electronically based application. So you can upload different formats like PDF, PowerPoint presentation, Word document. However, the GMC recommends that you upload all your documents in a PDF format. So as part of the application process, each doctor are expected to give four referees. So the first one has to be your current medical director or clinical director. The role of that ref uh, referee will mainly be commenting on your probity and fitness to practice. The other two referees has to be from your specialty. It has to be someone who have worked very closely with you in clinical settings because they will be expected to comment in detail about their direct observation of your clinical practice. So the fourth referee can be anyone uh, from your team or anyone part of the multidisciplinary team, but preferably choose someone who can comment on your clinical skills and who has worked with you in close proximity. Now let's move on to the application process and the time frame. So as I mentioned earlier, once you started opening, started the application, it is available for 12 months time. So you can even submit it before that. So from the time of your submission, it takes about six months for the GMC to come back to you with the verdict. So the first stage of the application process will be the initial assessment. As soon as you have submitted your application and you have paid your fees, you will be allocated a, a name person from the GMC who will be looking after your application throughout the process. So as soon as it's submitted, they go through all your evidences. This takes them about two weeks for them to go through these evidences. In the meantime, your referees will be contacted. So make sure your referees are made aware that they will be contacted. They will be contacted on the email ID they have registered with the General Medical Council. So it might not be the one they use at the moment. So please make sure they check that email as well. If your referee is someone who is not into uh, electronic media, then there is an option of the GMC providing them with a paper-based reference form which they can send, uh, fill and send it back to GMC. So this process takes about 14 days. So over the next four weeks, you will be provided with the evidence checklist and the named uh, person in GMC will be collating all your evidence. At this point, you will be given additional time to submit more evidence if you want. So this goes for another four weeks. So once all the evidence are collated, the named person will contact you again to ask 
if there are any more evidences you need to submit and then the evidence will be submitted to the respective royal colleges. There will be a panel of member in each royal college who will meet periodically and they will be going through your application and this process takes about six weeks. So at the end of six weeks they will submit their recommendation to GMC and GMC takes another four weeks to arrive at a conclusion and then that result or the verdict will be conveyed to you. There are two possible outcomes of your application. One is if your application is successful then it will be approved and your name will go on to the GMC specialist register. The other outcome will be your application could be rejected in which case the GMC will give clear recommendations of what more evidence or competency you need to achieve to fulfill or to get approved through the CSER pathway. So this graph shows the success rates of CSER applications across specialties. So this was taken on 2016, 17 and 18. What it tells is more than 50% of the applications are successful on the first attempt. So what if your application is rejected or if it's unsuccessful? Then you have two, uh, two options. So if once it is rejected, it will come out with a series of recommendations from the Royal College. It, might, it will specifically state what are the modules or competencies you need to achieve before you can resubmit. At this point, you have two options. One is either you can review the application process or you can appeal against the GMC's decision. If you are going to go down the route of reviewing the application process, then you have 12 months time to fulfill those recommendations and resubmit the application again. All you got to do is only resubmit those evidences that's the required and not the evidences you have submitted during the first application process. This involves a fee of 712 pounds as of now. On the other hand, you, you can even appeal the GMC's decision, appeal against the GMC decision. So this involves a hefty fees. The website says it could be between 1640 to 2480 pounds. I'm not sure what's the reason for the range of the fees is, but there is an option of you appealing the GMC decision as well. So this graph shows us the success rate following a review application. So once the recommendation is made, you have 12 months period to submit, resubmit the application and all you got to submit is only the recommendations that have been requested for. So if you look at this graph across specialty over three years period, it tells you that the success rate of the resubmitted application is close to 90%. So before you submit your application, it's worth knowing why applications are unsuccessful. So the main reason is the domain one where there are insufficient evidence uh, to support the breadth of your knowledge and competencies compared with the CCT curriculum. And on some instances, if you haven't passed the standard test of knowledge, which could be the fellowship or the membership exam of the particular royal colleges, then it becomes very hard to be successful. And also, things we, you might not think as important like audits, if you haven't completed the a loop or the audit cycle, then the applications can be rejected with recommendations or lack of research evidences. So that, that's another reason for an unsuccessful application and lack of management and leadership experience. So these are things the doctors don't take it seriously. So wherever there is an opportunity for you to be part of a management, pro, uh, management or a leadership please, please make use of the opportunity as these are crucial, valuable evidence when it comes to your CSR application process. 
to summarize each doctor need to be aware it is a long drawn process it involves lots and lots of planning and preparation it's a very very time consuming process some doctors think it's a shortcut route to get into the special register in fact it is a harder route than going through a structured training program because the enormity of evidence you need to submit to prove that your knowledge and competencies are equivalent to a trainee who has gone through a structured training program you need to provide nearly 1000 to 1200 pages of evidence and all the or the majority of evidence has to be in the last 5 years prospective evidence carries more weight than retrospective evidence but the key to successful application is hard working planning and preparation and reading the specialty specific guidance in detail and start preparing your application according to the needs of that particular specialty thank you for patiently listening to this presentation if you need to contact gmc regarding cesar then their email id is equivalence at gmc-uk.org if you need to contact me for any advice or support or help regarding cesar process i am more than happy to be contacted i've left my email id on this slide here all i would like to wish you is good luck and best wishes for the application process thank you